What's going, What's going on, on Growlers fans? Here? And welcome back, back to another to edition, edition of the Doghouse. Dog Dog Chris Ballard here with Casey and Brady, and today we're doing things a little differently. We've, we're, first of all, we are not in our normal studio. We are happy to be here in the Leon's living room at the Mary Brown Center today and very pleased to be welcomed by Growler's rookie forward, rookie sensation, Jackson Berezowski. Berezowski, as if I haven't said your name a thousand times this year. Jax, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, what do you think of the, the Leon's living room? Pretty cool, hey? Yeah. Well, I appreciate being here, and uh, yeah, we I know all the guys look at this, and we call it the best seats in the house, so it's, it's pretty cool to be here myself. No kidding. Well, let's jump right in. We've got you a short amount of time. Uh, we have a great view of the public skating happening around us here. Uh, coming off a pretty good road trip uh, with the boys, some tough games, North Division opponents again against Redding and Trois-Rivières. What do you make of, of that road trip? Wins, losses, a little bit of everything. Uh, we let a couple games slip from us, but I mean, uh, we, we learn from those games and uh, the wins. It's good to get to learn with uh, two points in the bank. So when uh, when we let a game like Twa almost slip, well, I think it was good to, uh, to show the resilience and kind of battle for that extra point in a shootout. But for us, we're we're in crunch time and crunch mode now. So I think all these are pretty crucial points and got to batten the hatches down, I guess you could say, and tighten it up for the last little last little segment here games by my count left uh, I get before we kind of get into what that might look like this being your first year in the pros how do you feel like you're holding up I guess to this stage of the season yeah I think I'm adjusting fairly well I think uh, any first year pro is you don't know what to expect and I came in same mindset I didn't know didn't know what to expect obviously I had a had a bunch of guys that I played with in junior that are in throughout the pro ranks at each level so it's good to pick their ears but for me I, it's just learning every every day it's I like to say be a sponge, and that's uh, soaking in everything, whether it's the coaching staff, players, trainers, anything. And that was that's been my mindset since day one, and, and will continue. Yeah, you might have a bit of an advantage on the college guys, with, just with regards to the length of the season, the way the home and away splits have worked. How have you found an ECHL road trip versus a WHL road trip? I know it's probably a lot more bust for you guys out west, but. It must seem like when you're on the road, you're, just, you're never coming home. It just feels never ending. How's that been for you? Yeah, I, knew, I know the guys joke about it a little bit. All the, the major junior guys and, and junior guys have, uh, we've played 68 games in a, in a season before, so it's fairly similar. Like you said, the travel's a little different out west. We got our long long bus trips out there, so kind of kind of prepares you for the grueling schedule of pro, but I didn't know what to expect coming here. We got long, <laughs> grueling road trips when we're out for, on the uh, road for two Two weeks and it takes a toll on the body, but it's good. We got a great group of guys and we're always having fun out there. So you must feel good when you get back here too. Like every time you come back, you're, you're really you're playing six home games. Opportunity to get some momentum. You guys must be looking forward to the next two weekends here. Absolutely, and I think it's uh, like you said, uh, home weekends. It's fun, always fun to play on weekends, especially here on the Rock. It's Friday, Saturday nights are. It's what makes hockey so fun. Coming into packed arenas like this, and it's. <laughs> Those are great too, but I mean, everybody can get up for a Friday and Saturday, that's for sure. You have been semi-consistently playing with O'Brien and Johnson up on that top line. How would you say playing with those guys has helped develop your game so far this season? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, we got a we got a great group, especially up uh, up front. Any guy you're playing with is is talented, and and you can learn from them all. But especially with Obi and Isaac, there they're they've been around for a while, and they're they're two very very skilled players. So it's it's nice. You just gotta got to try and get open and they'll find you the puck so it's always good playing with guys like that I feel like you've performed throughout your rookie season like have you met your own maybe personal expectations of what you were hoping to get out of a year like this uh yeah I, I think there's always there's goals and marks you want to hit but for me I think it's just trying to be as consistent as possible and the rest will take care of itself kind of kind of what I look at it but I'd be lying to you if I said I, it's not you're looking at stats or looking at what where guys are at. So I think it's I just am a student of the game and I soak all that in. It's not a negative nor positive. So I think for me it's just I like to have fun out there and hopefully the puck goes in that. How easy to do when you're living in a brand new place, a long way from home, uh, on a in a pretty unique place on the island of Newfoundland. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I uh, joke with my parents a little bit. It would, would be nice to have the billets there from the last couple of years, but hey, it's part of growing up and. And it's been fun so far. It's good to, uh, good to make your own foods, your meals, and good to uh, kind of live a little solo life. Yeah, exactly. So my girlfriend's down too, so it's fun. We got to do something together. So, well, I mean, we got to talk about the weather, especially what February had in store. I know you guys missed a little bit of it, but uh, 
It, mu this much snow uh, in your way uh, in the winter time? Not quite. Usually, yeah, the, the snow is not as not as heavy there, but it is definitely colder back in Sask. But here, I wasn't prepared for the amounts of dump dumps of snow it comes. But it's uh, yeah, it's fun to shovel all the snow and then see how the city reacts to it all. Lie, it's no, not I, fun. I don't mind it. it. Makes it a little home feeling. So, what is your girlfriend? Sorry, what is your girlfriend? Body. She doesn't like shoveling the snow, but hey, that's a problem for another day. So, <laughs> how have you been enjoying your time here in Newfoundland since you started living here this season? Yeah, I love it. It's it's fun. It's like I said, it's a new experience every day. So whether it's a new restaurant or tour in the island, it's it's all new to me and it's fun. So I gotta soak in something new every day, and I think that's pretty cool. What does the Jackson Berzowski off day in Newfoundland look like? I like it. We uh, well, I like to, I'm outdoors a lot, so we're going for walks quite a bit. I, we've hiked the Signal Hill area quite a bit, so that's always fun. I try to get as close to the water as possible without being an idiot, I guess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's windy, it's for sure. But it's cool. There's the uh, landscapes are fun, and usually on an off day, some sort of restaurants getting hit up, and it's try to be a new one every time, and it seems to be it seems to be fun. Here at all? Yeah, they were here uh, my first weekend here, so home opener. They got to tour it a little bit. It's nice. They rented a car, so we got to go around the island. What and they think of it? Have they been here before? No, that was their first time coming this east, and yeah, it was fun. They they enjoyed it. It's a lot different than back home. So I mean, anywhere is different than where where we're from. But it's it's yeah, it's a, like I said, new experience. So it's just fun in its own. Can you put your finger on maybe the difference in style of hockey between the ECHL and maybe the WHL? Is the style something that you feel fits your game? Uh, I think so. I think uh, my style of game can kind of adjust to that. And the only main, main difference is the the physical stature of everybody. It's you're going against men rather than boys out there. And, and the dub is, it's, it's it's a tough league like any other junior league, but I think just uh, you're going against a guy that has 50 extra pounds and it's you go from one of the bigger guys to one of the smaller guys real fast. But And you've scrapped twice this year yeah. with guys pretty <laughs> big? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a... Not a scrapper, but sometimes you gotta gotta do what's best. Well. Yeah, exactly. So gotta be a hockey player sometimes. How much fighting have you done in your career? Is this something you not a whole had lot? To yeah, I think I've maybe have four in junior, five in junior, if that. But Flipping through a couple here. Yeah, no. Well, just gotta show the got the teammates' backs at all times. So I think that goes a long way in the room. It's that time of year, right? I mean, it's kind of going to be a next man up mentality thing right now. You've got guys that are helping out the Marlies. You're bringing guys in who are performing really well. A lot of, a lot of new defensemen who have fit right in, in my opinion. Um, this organization, this fan base, honestly, this time of year, a lot of times have been looking at, are we going to finish first or second? We're going to have home ice. They've been pretty spoiled. You guys are, you know, you're figuring it out. It's a young team. Um, it must be fun, though, to be playing these games right now that are, are borderline playoff games that you got six here at home where you could really, you know, nail out that spot for yourself. Absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, when, like I said, crunch time rolls around, every game feels like a playoff game. So I think it's it's good for us when we're, when we're in these tight games because come playoff time, it's those are the games that are going to maybe win or send you pack in a little early. So I think we want to get used to these games and get used to that style of hockey, like you said. And if we can do that with a skilled team like we have, I think we we got a good shot to go far. Yeah, and you said 18 games left, 12 of them right here. That's got to be a good feeling as well, right? Absolutely. Anytime you can play at home, I think that's a huge advantage, especially when, when you're at a place like this. It's uh, It helps, uh, helps the guys a lot to play at home. After these next two weekends, a lot of big divisional games coming up. How big are those guys? Uh, how big are those games for you and the guys in the room? Yeah, massive. I think especially when we're going against uh, a team that's tight in the standings, just like us, like a Norfolk or a, a Twa or anything like that. It's those are not just two-point games; they're they're four, six-point swings kind of thing. So you wanna you wanna win those when you can and, and bump the guys a little lower than you in the standings. What are the next? What has happen over the next 18 games for the growlers to like ex enter the playoffs the right way like what do you want to do necessarily not wins and losses but just in terms of how do you want to see the team play over the next 18. Yeah, I think just con continuing to be consistent I think that's the we've struggled with that lately whether we'll we'll have two good games and a third one we kind of slide off if if we can start pulling together three three big games on a weekend I think that's going to be huge come playoff time and, and that could be a series series defining uh, honestly uh if you can win three games in a row that's that's huge in a series so i think if we can start getting that mentality and even in practice today guys are battling and competing well so it's it's yeah it's, it's average work day yeah it's it's fun hockey when when you're on the ice and you're getting a little fu match with a teammate it's good it brings the best out of both guys so 
the face-offs too. Always honing the craft. <laughs> yeah, I mean, always trying to add to your, your toolbox is what you like to say. So I'm not a centerman partake, but if, if I have to take a draw or two, I'll, I'm willing to do it. So. Did like. I know you can only share so much with regards to messaging in the room and stuff, but how do you guys approach this? You know, some people I've heard, you know, you break it down in, in seven games. Uh, you're, you're getting ready for that playoff style. Like, what's the approach in the room right now? You don't want to get too far ahead. Is it is the goal home ice? Is it just to get there? Like, how, how are you guys approaching that right now? Uh, I think for ours, the last our schedule, the way it plays out is is uh, you kind of have a, a series weekend anyways, and yeah. which is kind of beneficial for us with playoffs because you're playing the same same team for a, over a course of a weekend. So when it's a three-game three game series, we're, we're trying to win that series, whatever it takes. And if we can get the so-called sweep on it, that's a, just a kind of feather in your cap kind of thing. But our focus is, yeah, to, to win the weekend every weekend, and that's kind of what our mentality has been. Try to help me navigate and help the fans too. So uh, it was a great weekend. A couple last homestand, Greenville, that sweep, running out onto the road with all the momentum in the world. It's, it's going to sound like a rude question, but like, what happened against against Reading? Like, was there something that kind of prevented that ball from rolling? Like, I'm not trying to get into the weeds here, but uh, I we expected that to maybe go a little differently to begin. Yeah, I don't know if we just maybe took them a little lightly or or weren't in the right mental state, but I think uh, that's something we can learn from is every team in the league is good and where the, wherever they are in the standings is you can't take them lightly because they obviously showed us, they kind of took it to us a little bit in those games and that's uh, if we want to be a playoff team, we got to make sure we're consistently putting our best foot forward and, and we didn't that weekend unfortunately, but it's something we can learn from. Ended the road trip with a, uh, a nice shootout winner yourself. Uh, at what point did you know kind of what move you were going to pull off trying to fire that one in? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I knew it right off the bat. I, I kind of saw the other. Uh, Isaac went first, and I saw what he did, and then I missed a couple chances in the game, uh, and I went glove side, so I thought, hey, why not try blocker? And fortunately enough, it went in, and, and then Pex was huge on the other end, which he was the guy that kind of kept us in the whole game when we weren't playing well and he sure enough he came out big in, in the shootout as well what have you seen in his growth this year i mean even from weekend one all the way through now he looks like a whole different goalie yeah phenomenal i mean he he's putting the work in on the ice and practice and and he's he's in a different i want to say mental state he's 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 unbelievable he shows up every game for us and when you have a goalie tandem and even three with cavi coming up and down like our they're our backbone of the team every every night so him, Drides is unbelievable, and, and Cavi, they all filter in, and we know any night that one of them's in that, we, we got a chance to win, and that's all you can ask for. I kind of want to take you back to before the puck even dropped in Reading, when you guys were trying to leave the rock in the middle of a snowstorm. I kind of wanted to get your story and what the experience was like trying to figure out how to travel from Newfoundland. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best, but you got to learn to fight through adversity a little bit, I guess you could say. We, we got snowed in, I guess, or whatever it was, in Toronto, the the plane wasn't landing for whatever reason. So then we we ended up shuttle carring during the night uh, all the way down to Reading. I think it was a nine and a half hour trip or whatever it was. So it was gross travel, but I mean you gotta gotta do what you gotta do and put the work boots on. It it sucked, but it. it <laughs> It was yeah, good. I put the game day post out that morning, and Ken O'Leary kind of texted me and said, you know, slow your roll. Yeah. Don't get ahead of yourselves here. The boys are not even halfway there. So I can't, I mean, that might help explain a little bit the way that that series started. I think that's fair. Um, I don't think there's anyone in the room saying, oh, that's okay to lose no, that one, boys. God, no. Never any excuses on, on the side, but yeah, it's got to go through a little and adversity. On that, same, on that same token, you guys are up 3 nothing against TR through two periods of flying. It goes 3-3. I mean, Anytime you go into overtime these days, and especially a, a shootout, it's a bit of a crapshoot, but you got to be thinking last game of the road trip, like we need to find a way to get this one done. Whatever it was to close it out, obviously we would have liked to do it in, in, the, in the first 60 minutes, but kudos to them. And we let uh, let off the gas a little bit and hung pecs out to dry, which we were a little disappointed at that. But at the end of the day, we got got to two points, and that's what we came there to do. So it's record, so in hindsight, I'm sure he's happy. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. always good too for him, so... Kalamazoo coming to town this weekend. What's the tail of the tape on these guys? Yeah, I mean, just like uh, just like the last couple teams we've played, you can't can't take these guys lightly. I mean, they're a non-divisional team, but I mean, these points are just as big, especially for us. So, like uh, like I said at the start, just win the weekend, and that's our that's what our goal is going into it. 
Okay, no, I mean, I would say Kalamazoo's in a similar spot to us. And then after that, it's Idaho. And I think that Idaho trip, taking two out of three against them at the time, they were the top team in the league. That felt like a big moment. I don't want to speak for you guys, but like for a young team on one of your first long road trips, that two out of three in Idaho felt like a, a bit of a momentum switch positively for you guys. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that was a, it was a huge weekend. Yes. The, just the morale in the room was was huge when you can take down a team in the standings like that. I mean, we're, we're looking forward to do it again, but like we said, can't, can't really get ahead of ourselves and we got to worry about this weekend first. But yeah, of course, we're looking forward to that weekend. Well, boys, I think that's going to do it for this edition of the Doghouse. We're going to thank Jackson Berezowski <laughs> for being here today. <laughs> and uh, lots of different stuff uh, coming down the pipe. We have lots of great promo nights. This weekend against Kalamazoo, we've got Valen Night, Kids Eat Smart, and on the Sunday... Fairness That's night. right. And yeah. then into next weekend, there's even better ones. We have Mary Brown's night. Yep. That's going to be my favorite night maybe of the entire year. Uh, and then, uh, I, as if I don't have the list in front of me, India night, yep. which fans don't even know what they're getting excited about for that one yet. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, Nevaeh Lemonade Stand night. Always uh, one to circle on the calendar. Two ticks and a T coming up for Patty's Day. Uh, season ticket renewals start Friday. What am I missing? So much coming down the pipe. There's too many to remember. Two tickets in tea are on sale right now. They just right now. Before, now? Before, yeah. It's so, a green T-shirt too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sweet. It's, it's, it's an a, awesome T-shirt. Terrible tea. Todd Skirving leprechaun graphic. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely horrific. Sorry, Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, have you seen it? No, I haven't. It's almost worth getting a live oh, reaction. Get fired up. Yeah. It's. I mean. Oh, sorry. There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. He looks yeah. Good. Nightmare oh, fuel. Yeah, I think he looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, so you heard it here. Next next Patty's Day, Jackson Berezowski sure. hey, yeah. live in, in a leprechaun outfit. <laughs> I don't know if I got the beard for that, but. Well, you have a year. I just want to jump in. Hey, obviously, you see the, the beautiful Leon's living room every time you come down to the rink. Great So point. if you want to try to book it out and have your friends down here enjoy a night down to Leon's living room, make sure to go email tickets at nlgrowlers.com. They'll get you sorted out. There you go. Thank you, KC. Bye. Thank you, Brady. Thank you, Jackson. And I'm Chris Ballard. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll catch you next. What am I doing today? I am chewing on my tongue. We will catch you next time on the Doghouse. Bye-bye.